Today we're going to be going over a startup and shutdown and all the key points on this MM250 Mastic Mixer. So to begin we'll do a walk around and point out all the key items on the unit um, for those who are un unfamiliar with it. Uh, first thing, your battery kill switch located in the front A-frame here. This will be the first and the last thing that you're touching on this unit uh, during your workday. This is your diesel engine. Uh, this is what powers the hydraulic agitation system uh, on the unit. This is your ignition box here. Standard procedure for starting a diesel engine. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is your hydraulic agitator block uh, control. It's got a simple valve here, forward reverse. Forward will bring all of your mastic material towards the front of the trailer, putting it down into reverse will allow the paddles to bring the material to the back so that you can uh, dispense it out the rear. You do have a speed control here. This will control how fast your agitation moves, all uh, operator preference, um, and there is a locking ring here so when you get it to the, the speed you like, you can turn that one down and lock it in place so that it doesn't move. You have a throttle control right here. Again, very simple. Counterclockwise to throttle up clockwise to throttle down or ultimately you can just push the red button there and it'll automatically go back down to the idle. Okay so next uh, is this is your control box uh, for the diesel burner so you'll go ahead and you'll open the box you'll see you have a little bit of instructions here on the burner just in case anything gets forgotten or you have new operators um, you have a very simple control panel you have an hour meter you have a volt gauge a little LED indicator to tell you that there's power going to the box and then obviously your toggle switch with your two thermostats one for your oil one for your material and we'll get into that control uh, in a little bit as well so this is an oil jacketed unit um, it's powered with a single 320,000 BTU diesel burner um, it's a Beckett burner uh, there's a pressure gauge down there so you can monitor what kind of fuel pressure you're getting, you know, kind of an indicator to tell you if the burner's on because it is fairly quiet. Um, you have a single diesel burner uh, fuel filter and then there is also ball valves underneath the fuel tank for on-off control. So one of the nice safety options of this unit is there is a micro switch. Uh, which will shut off your agitation when the door is opened. Makes it a little bit safer for your operator when they're loading material in. Door comes down, reactivates the switch, which allows the agitator to, to begin again automatically. So at the rear curbside of the corner, you'll see you have a ball valve for a shut off here for your torch. And then you have an integrated ball valve and quick release fitting, which will feed the torch for your chute. The unit's also equipped with double overnight heaters. Um, they just plug into a standard uh, extension cord uh, just to the wall. Um, the intended purpose of these is to keep your oil around approximately 100 degrees. It's not meant to keep the oil at full temp. It just cuts, uh, cuts down on the initial startup time in the morning. Okay, so under the chute, you'll see that there's a single 80,000 BTU propane burner. It has a needle valve underneath the hose here that'll control the flow. You'll definitely want to have this on before dispensing your material to get the chute nice and hot so that it continues down and gets to the ground before it starts to, you know, to solidify. So one of the most important things, you know, in regards to safety and operation of the unit is the heat transfer oil. So the heat transfer oil that is in this unit um, we have preset to 500 Fahrenheit and you don't need to go any higher. Um, it's really important that the vent lines on this unit are checked uh, on a regular basis to make sure that they do stay clear and open. Um, the reason for this is due to the constant, uh, you know, cool, hot, all the condensation that goes in, it does start to what we call coke up the oil and the oil physically turns into a solid material and if it does that it can plug those lines and ultimately the machine will have nowhere to vent and that's a very bad situation to, to get into. So in regards to cleaning and checking the vent lines the easiest way is to take a, two wrenches 
hold your fitting here so it doesn't twist the braided hose and kink it and just take the, the line right off. You wanna make sure your fittings are clear and that you can see right through the hose. Maybe a good idea to run some compressed air through it just to make sure that it's clear. And on the expansion tank side here, you should be able to see right through to the other side. That will give you a good indication that it is clear. And ultimately the same thing applies for the hose up on top. That's the one that vents to the atmosphere. Um, when the unit is running, it is normal to see a little bit of condensation or oil dripping out the bottom of the pipe. And if the unit is not on a flat surface, you may see some oil coming out, um, whether it's dripping or a little minor stream. We wanna try and keep the unit as level as possible when the oil's hot to prevent that from happening. So on the street side, you do have a tool heater. You keep all of your tools in here while you're not using them to keep them nice and hot so that you can manipulate the mastic um, you know, without any issue. There is a clean out door here. As the mastic builds up on the tools, it does heat up in there and drip down. So that allows you to keep it clean and tidy. And this tool heater is also powered by the same 80,000 BTU vapor propane uh, burner with the same needle valve flow control on it. So at the front of the trailer here on the street side, uh, you can see your bottle holder. Um, you do have a brass fitting here so that if you don't run a bottle, you can have the regulator hooked up so it doesn't go bouncing down the runway or the road and break. You're provided with a 15 foot hose and then you have a main shutoff ball valve here to kill all propane flow. And then you have an additional one here which will control the flow to the tool heater. Just beside the bottle holder here is your hydraulic oil fill. That's for your agitation system. That should also be checked on a regular basis. So finally at the front uh, in the A-frame here, there is their uh, electric breakaway kit. Pretty standard. It does give you a little test button right here. You can push in. You'll get a green LED when your battery's full, an amber LED when it's low, and if it needs to be charged, it will show red, but this does charge through the truck and you shouldn't have any issues. In regards to proper procedure or operation, um, like I said earlier, battery disconnect switch is always the first thing you're gonna do. So you're gonna turn your battery kill switch on. Now, normally you wanna start your engine first. This is so your charging system, um, you know, is charging as everything's on. You don't have any significant draw on the battery, but for this video, we're gonna start the engine last uh, because it is noisy and you probably won't be able to hear me anymore. So, battery kill switch is done. We're gonna come over to the control box. So at this point, your engine would be running. You're at a good idle. You would come over here, flick your switch on. You see your volt gauge register, your thermostats are registering, and now your burner is kicking on. It is showing you right now the ambient temps for your oil and material. Both of them are reading approximately 61 Fahrenheit. If you wanna see what you have your uh, temperature set to, you just hit the set button right here. Just hit it once. It shows you 500 is your set for your oil, 400 for material. If you ever wanna change this, these are your upper limits. 500 for your oil is your upper limit, 400 for your material, you can't go any higher. If you wish to go lower, I would suggest material only. Leave the oil at 500. The machine was designed for it to be at that temperature. If you want to change your material, you will push the set button in. You'll hold it until it registers your temp. You can now use your arrows and adjust. If you want it at 390, you just hit set. You'll see it flash and register back to your current ambient temp. And now when you click your set button, now your new upper limit is 390. So when you turn your, um, your switch on, your diesel burner fires up, you have a five second pre-purge at 40 PSI on the pressure gauge. And after five seconds, your burner ignites. It'll then go up to 140 PSI and that is the normal operating pressure. Um, we don't want to adjust that. Again, everything is set to work at 140 PSI. When we shut the burner off, when you're done for the day or anything like that, you'll notice that the burner will go back to 40 PSI and it'll sit there like that for two minutes. During those two minutes, we wanna make sure we don't kill the battery power 
This is an important part of the burner shutdown to prevent anything from being damaged inside due to the heat inside the vat. Okay, so now at your engine, like I stated earlier, simple diesel uh, startup. You turn your key to your run position. You'll see your glow plug LED is illuminated. You're gonna wanna wait for that glow plug light to go out. Once it goes out, Okay, so with your engine running, at this point you could come back over here to your control block, forward, reverse, depending where you want your material to be flowing. You have your speed control, like I said, so when you look at your agitator, you'll be able to see which way it's spinning. Forward is clockwise, reverse is counterclockwise, and again, your speed control, you can slow it right down, or you can speed it up. So operating procedure from start to finish, battery disconnect switch on. You're gonna come over here, make sure your valve handle is in the off or neutral position. You will start your engine. Once your engine is running and it is at a good idle or a slow RPM, then you can come over here and turn on your, uh, your burner. The, one of the main things we always want to be doing is checking the heat transfer oil as, as I explained earlier. So in order to check your heat transfer oil with your oil thermometer here, you'll put a wrench on it, spin it out. Once it's out, you can pull it out of the pipe. And to check your oil, you're going to use this as a dipstick. So one inch up from the bottom will be a full level. So what you want to do is you want to put it back in here, dunk it back in until the bottom of the threads hit the top of the coupling and then pull it back out. At that point, if you see three quarters of an inch uh, up the rod, then that would be a proper full indication. That way when it threads in, it'll read your full one inch. The best way to check your oil and the only way that we recommend checking your oil for a proper level indication is when the oil is cold and the machine is on a level surface. If you are on a, a bit of a hill, it won't read correctly and that will give you a false indication of the oil level, whether it's too low or too high depending on the angle of the unit. So make sure that it's level and make sure that it is cold. Um, so you do get the proper uh, level reading. Otherwise, it will read a little bit higher if it's, even if it's warm, and that's not good. And then at the front of the trailer for the hydraulic oil that we went over earlier as well, same kind of thing applies. You'll pull out your cap, which has an integrated dipstick. There is a full line indicator right there. Factory spec or setting, we do put it a little bit high, just so that while the fluid is through all of the lines, the reservoir tank is always full. So that's your basic startup, shutdown, and operation uh, of the MM250 Mastic Mixer. If you do have any questions or concerns, you can always give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. And there are uh, safety labels and everything on the machine inside the box to show you proper burner start up and shut down if that gets forgotten but you can always give us a call and we're always here to help.